Kalima, Kalima, the Tuggies will steal your heart by ripping it right out of your chest and you burn up in their lava pit. I'm John Renton with the Retro View of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Shrieking Gary Michael Capetta noises, the tag team of Doom. Uh, kittens give Morbo gas. A lot of references are going to happen in this one. Yes, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Okay, for 1984, the sequel to, wait for it, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Wait, a sequel to a movie called Indiana Jones with the same title of Indiana Jones? Ow! Ow, that hurt. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this movie in the comments, please. And... I'm preparing to watch Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. It's coming out in about three weeks. So yes, once again directed by Steven Spielberg. The story is by George Lucas, back when George Lucas actually gave a shit about doing stuff that was good. Even though, honestly, in comparison to Rares of the Lost Ark, this movie <clears throat> has a few things against it that I will get into. This is a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> It was written by two people that did American Graffiti and Howard the Duck. That kind of explains a lot about the writing in this. Yeah, I haven't seen this in years. I mean, even though I'm a fan of the Indiana Jones movies, obviously having the complete adventures that this came out, of course, years before, I decided why not rewatch them and see do they still hold up. And this one mostly does. There are there's a lot of fun, there are a lot of fun moments. Kate Capshaw is fucking irritating in this. And she admits she hates how her character was portrayed in this. And <clears throat> she... her It's not even like a funny type of annoying. Like, you know, in the first one. Like, the heroine in the first one. Of course, she... You know, she was fine even though she was kind of the damsel in distress. She also could be kind of a bit of a badass as it is. Kate Capshaw was just seen as a completely annoying, inept... And quite frankly, you know, stupid bitch. And I'm talking about the character. I'm not talking about Kate Capshaw. <clears throat> of course, there is a running gag that she was only there because of her relationship with Steven Spielberg. But nevertheless, Harrison Ford returns as Indiana Jones. Ki Hui Kwan in his debut. Dr. Jones! Really hope that doesn't come across as offensive. I mean, honestly, this launched him into pretty high territory. I mean, he was in this, he was in Goonies, and then he wasn't really in anything else until, oh yeah, everything everywhere all at once. A hell of a return to form. Honestly, this movie's terrific. Watch this after you rewatch Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Um, Mola Ram. Mola Ram, Mola Ram, Mola Ram, Mola Ram, Mola Ram. Anyway. Amrish Puri, who apparently shaved his head for the role. He was the one that did Kalima, Kalima. He shaved his head for the role, and apparently the look was so well received by so many other um, India film companies and directors and film crews and people in general that he kept the look and actually apparently was very successful in India for a number of years afterwards. That's good. <laughs> and so there were other people in this as well. Philip Stone, no, not Dr. Stone. Sorry, okay, I'm sorry. Rick Young and a few others in this. And it's set a year before Rares of the Lost Ark in 1935. That's the one thing I actually forgot about this is this took place before Raiders. For some reason, I just totally zoned out on that. So, the plot, such as it is, <coughs> Indy has a deal that goes a little bit awry. One of his uh, partners gets killed. And him, Willie, played by Kate Capshaw in short round, end up crash landing in India and must help a village retrieve a stone that will give them, that will give their village, you know, their <coughs> provisions back and all that. And from there, we have the movie about the Tuggies. No, really, that's actually what it is. They, they, they're a cult that sounds like a goddamn, you know, off-brand diaper. I for, because I thought it was Thuggies, but I'm like, oh no, Tuggies, Tuggies. Tuggies. <coughs> anyway. So yeah, 1935, we have um, <coughs> Kate Capshaw dancing with a bunch of uh, girls. It's dancey, sparkly girls. Anything goes in Shanghai, literally anything goes, including people that need to go out of the way while a kid is racing a truck along crowded streets. 
Shanghai traffic laws apparently are a lot different. Um, and Kate hating her character because she was a dumb blonde here sort of makes sense. There's there's a guy named Lao, not Kung Lao, not Kung Pao, enter the fist. Diamond Lao, not Diamond Lil, because there's no Fabulous Moolah near this movie, which is a good thing. And then we get his, you know, the Indy's friend that was playing the butler, uh, you know, butler, got shot during this whole thing that was going on, this whole fracas of champagne, champagne bottles and caviar dreams being blown up. And he can't save him. Also, this villainous Lao poisoned Indy, so he has this weird elixir in a little vial that he must that he must drink soon, or otherwise he'll die. Even though he can do a whole lot of shit during this fight and not feel the poison, apparently this poison's going to kill him. A little bit of logic loophole there. Uh, Kate Capshaw ends up entering this whole damn thing, and from there, these three <coughs> go off on an adventure. I did like the fight among the... Uh, giant spinning gong show disc thing and also the fact that you know that nobody can aim properly for shit except to shoot the one character that is expendable also all the balloons around and the fact that there's a diamond diamond if anybody gets a simpsons reference i'll love you guys <clears throat> don't know why they would let the kid drive but nevertheless uh, apparently ki hui kwan was able to drive from a very early age many people thought he was under 10 he actually apparently was 12 when this was filmed, um, or somewhere around that. And then they get on a plane, last minute thing where they get on a plane full of poultry. And fortunately, the pilots are not, the pilots are in on it, the pilots are in on it. They dump the fuel, and these three must get away from the plane that's going down over these snowy mountains, and they get in a life raft, <laughs> and um, Somehow it stays even enough. They skydive out of this thing. It lands on the snow. They you know, snowboard down the whole goddamn thing. And then they end up in a river. A river runs through it. Or the River Wild. God, the River Wild was weird. 90s were a weird time for movies. This didn't take place during the 90s. This took place in 1984. It was this or Gremlins that was responsible for the PG-13 rating. I don't remember which. I believe it was one of those two. I'm willing to be corrected in the comments. So, then they end up in the village. The village basically tells them, this cult, they took our children, and they took the stone. They gave us all these provisions, like basic food and nourishment and livestock and all that. We must have the stone back. And then they set off on an adventure. Fun little fact, this movie cost $28 million. Um, in today's money, about $82 million. And that's up from the $18 million that the first one apparently cost, which was about $60 million in today's money. And then they had the U.S. gross of 179, which the one set was basically 180, and it was about 525 million in today's money. Worldwide gross, 333 million, 972 or some odd million in today's money, which is down actually. This was down about 300 something million, 300 something million from the first one, and that was three years prior. So. The inflation calculator, yeah, three years might not make all that much difference, but still, that's... I mean, they had a good return here, but I think word got out that this wasn't quite as good as Raiders, and I'm willing to be shouted down in the comments. Because there were parts that I liked more than parts in Raiders, but the Raiders one seemed a little bit more grounded. This one just had a lot of shouting. A lot of shouting from a lot of annoying characters. So... We then continue with the notes that I wrote down in very, very feverish fashion. <laughs> they, what is uh, Sankara? Fortune and glory, kid. Fortune and glory. And apparently uh, Willie did not appreciate how the elephant stank and poured perfume on it. Maybe don't do that with a wild animal. Maybe, maybe don't. Maybe don't. You dumb bitch. What the hell's wrong with you? So there's giant vampire bats in the daytime. Make it make sense. I mean, I know. Vampires, all that. <laughs> it's silly. So apparently during a campfire scene, Indy says he found Short Round <clears throat> living on the streets after Shanghai was bombed. He tried to pick his pocket and said, You're a good kid that tried to pick my pocket. Come along with me. Whatever. Uh, uh, Ki Hui Quan 
I'm really struggling to make sure I say that name correctly because I suck at pronouncing foreign names. They've been friends ever since. And since this is the year before Raiders, it sort of does make sense <laughs> that these characters, you know, are tied to Indy more like, oh, okay, this is how this happened. This is what led to Raiders of the Lost Ark. And then we get to The Last Crusade. Don't worry, I'll be reviewing Last Crusade at some point. And Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So, they end up going off on foot. The natives uh, are getting restless and scared by the statue covered in blood. They run off. We have to walk from here. And then they go to the Palace of Pecant. Pen, uh, Pencot, whatever. Pecan. Let's just go to the Pecan for, uh, Fortress of Pecanitude. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. There's a kid, Maharaja, and he's still better than Jinder Mahal. If you are not a wrestling fan, you have no fucking idea what I'm talking about. And then we get the comedy, in large quotations, about all the shit that they're eating. It to me, Hindu Mario, there's snakes with snakes stuffed in there, assuming, assuming pregnant snakes or something. Um, scarabs that don't crawl in your chest and bite you. And chilled monkey brains. I remember laughing at this movie a lot more a while ago. I don't know if I'm just jaded or something didn't click with me here. <laughs> but the, the soup with the eyes was kind of funny. Clearly this guy, Chitar, who is played by, let me just take a look at my notes, Russian Seth. I don't know if that's a flipped around name. I don't really have a goddamn clue. He's clearly evil, and it turns out he's actually evil. So, then there's the romance teases between Indy and Willie and stuff like that. And neither one wants to give in to temptation. They want the other to come to them, or over them, or likely over and on and in them. You're welcome for that, by the way. They end up finding out, hey, wait a second, this palace is housing the catacombs where this Tuggy tribe is. And, of course, the only way to get that is to push on the tits of this statue that has tits for some reason. It's like the Rosie Perez of statues. And then, uh, so many bugs, so many goddamn bugs. The temple needed more death traps is what I noted. Um, and then we get the heart stuff. Kalima, Kalima rips the heart out. And then the guy lowers in the pit and ends up in the lava pit that they have and somehow is still alive. Also, the way they do this is they have you drink black blood or d dark blood from a uh, particular skull that they have. And if you do, you're under their power. The, all the kids that were kidnapped are working in the mines digging for these other two stones. They have three stones, but they need five stones. Dr. Stones! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe it's like Power Stone. Power Stone was a good game. The Dreamcast should have done better. Let's get back to this. More, you know, more craziness. All this uh, insane stuff going on. There's these traps and going on and Kate... Kate Capshaw nearly causes them to die because she won't reach into the giant squishy hole. Everything reminds me of her. I should call her. <laughs> Again, these, this is from the writers of Howard the Duck, which probably should have given me an indication as to why this movie had kind of meager writing compared to Raiders of the Lost Ark. And then Indy ends up getting, you know, trapped and blah, 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 You know, gets the blood down his goddamn throat. We have all the kids around the mine carts and everything shrieking Final Fantasy 3 slash 6 noises. If you get that, you're a deep cut uh, video game fan. And the kid emperor is evil. The kid Maharaja, actually he's possessed. He also does voodoo, the hoodoo that you do so well. <laughs> and he's possessed. Um, Willie almost gets lowered into the pit. And then... Short round has to burn him. Ah, don't worry. I'm all right, kid. Da, 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 da. I have third fucking degree burns. And then he kills one guy, or just seemingly the guy he, The guy gets crushed and then gets carried off because his body's not in the next shot. Um, and then Mola Ram is like, ha, huh, you think you got me in trap door, motherfuckers? Roll a ram, roll a ram, roll a ram, roll a ram. And... There's various people on this other side of this pit that are either cheering or gassy or possibly just happy to get work. It's hard to tell. 
The kids decide to revolt after sh they see Short Round do something and throw a guard off a deal and get up on get up into a cavernous opening and get up. <laughs> and then these kids revolt and they bash the pals and do all this. They go, oh, we should have totally tried this 2,000 kidnappings ago. And Emperor Kid, the hoodoo that you do so well, stabbing Indy with the goddamn, um, you know, with the pin, the voodoo doll. Fun fact, apparently Harrison Ford needed back surgery when I believe it was, I think it was the scene where the guy tried to choke him from behind. I'm trying to remember. It was one of the scenes where a guard attacked him, which doesn't really narrow it down. And he actually herniated a disc in his back and needed back surgery and a lot of stuff needed to be performed by a stuntman. Which, to be fair, by this point, Harrison Ford was a big goddamn star. If they were going to use stuntmen, if they had to use a little more and use camera tricks around, and I'm sure Harrison Ford was gutted about that, at least he's still able to walk. That's good. Everybody should be able to walk. Most people. Anyway. So they end up going down the mine shaft stuff, and I think this movie needed more mine carts and more flooded tunnels at this point. Um, short round is try doing comedy, tries to use the brake. The brake won't work. And then they end up outside. You know, they're outside this tunnel. They're on this cliff. And then they crawl up, and there's this giant suspension bridge that apparently, according to fact, Steven Spielberg, is agoraphobic, would not walk across. But <clears throat> Harrison Ford said, I don't care. Run, 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 He would just do that because he just didn't give a shit. I'm sure he was smiling because Harrison Ford always fucking smiles. And then <clears throat> um, they're on the suspension bridge, which apparently was hanging up pretty goddamn high. Apparently it was like over like a 200-foot gorge. And... <clears throat> You know, you got Mola Ram and his guys, and then other soldiers over here from his deal. And they're all converging. Indy says, I'll drop the stones. Don't worry, they'll be found, but you won't. Well, shit. Let me just cut the bridge down. What are you doing? Man, dropping the stones into the river, that was too... That It's like, that wasn't going too far, but you're going to cut down the bridge that we're on. What the hell's wrong with you? Yeah, he called your bluff, motherfucker. So, <clears throat> the bridge ends up on two sides. The other soldiers are just over here like, huh, wonder what the hell's going on. Also, they, this gorge, the water in this gorge has gators. Or the gates are good. Shut it! And then they end up, you know, the few people, like we got we got Willie in short round. They eventually end up on top of the cliff. These soldiers gradually fall. Um, Molaram decides to try to do the heart thing on the goddamn bridge, which may be not the best goddamn idea, probably not the best position to try to do that because, oh yeah, Indy knows other languages, and make, basically says, you angered Siva, Siva, Shiva, whatever, I don't know, the goddess of ice. More Final Fantasy talk on this than I expected. One of the stones falls, the other stones fall, or a stone falls, and then the third stone, he catches it, <coughs> Mola Ram does, but oh my god, it burns my hand. And then Indy catches it, and then that's it. So the other two stones seemingly are being consumed by the alligators. Meaning we're going to get giant uh, stone-influenced alligators. Power stone gators. There we go. That's the move. That's the video game we need. And that's it. So Mola Ram dies. They take the stone back to the goddamn village. Um... Kate Capshaw and Harrison Ford are together in this movie, yet I don't believe we ever see Kate Capshaw in a movie like this again. And, oh yeah, the kids are back. So hopefully the famine is over and the food returns and the livestock returns and everything because they were barely surviving after the kids got kidnapped and now, and now they got a lot more mouths to feed. And there ain't nothing in this world for free because they can't slow down, they can't give up even though they wish they could because there ain't no rest for the starving. Until we close our eyes for good. That was mean. I don't know why it ended like that. But nevertheless, Indiana Jones. Yes, Indiana Jones. It's a good collection, by the way, to buy. So, that's Raiders of the Lost Ark. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rifflin. I'll see you soon.